Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 96, reading the first four verses. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise His name. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Well, a very good morning to each and every one of you. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and I wish to welcome you to our service this morning. I truly hope and trust and pray that you are still keeping well in our current situation. And yes, now we are back only online once again. But it is great to be with you wherever you may be. And I thank you for allowing me into your house, into your business, into your office, wherever you may be, that I can just come and share the word of God with you. May I apologize uh, first hand because of the sound quality. I'm back on the old system as currently we don't have any electricity at Grand Park Ridge. Um, the electricity is down and we're waiting for them to restore the electricity. And therefore I'm back on my laptop computer recording this service. So my apologies for this. Please bear with us. I'm sure I am still audible. But let's get started. Let us praise the Lord and let us continue to be worshipful and bringing all the honor and glory to his name today. So let us come before the Lord in prayer. Come, let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we come this morning with praise in our hearts, Lord praising you and worshiping you and proclaiming your majesty, proclaiming that you are the God of gods and the Lord of lords, and it is you that we've come to praise and worship today. Dear Lord Jesus, you are our Redeemer and you have set us free. You paid the ultimate price for us. And Holy Spirit, you have come to dwell within us so that we may have a friend, that you may open our eyes and that you may give us all the spiritual gifts. So, Lord, Holy Spirit, and Jesus, we come praising you and worshipping you. But, Lord, as we come, we know that in a week gone by, we have not listened to you, we have not loved one another, and we have been plain disobedient. And, Lord, we know that when we have committed these sins, we need to come clean with you. And therefore, you, Lord, have said to us that if we do repent and turn from our wicked ways, you will forgive us. O oh Lord, that is why in our silence right now we come to open our hearts to you, to confess our sins. Lord, hear our hearts in our silence right now. Oh, dear Lord God, we have emptied ourselves before you. And we pray, Lord, that you will remove these sins from us as far as the east is from the west. Oh, dear Lord God, we just thank you, Lord, that we can come to you and ask for forgiveness and that, you, that we can atone for our sins directly to you in, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, Lord, we praise you and we thank you for that. We know we can go into a world knowing that our sins have been forgiven. But Lord, as we come today to praise you, to worship you and hear your word to us, we just want to pray that you will bless our service, that you will touch each and every one of us so that we may hear you today, Lord. Oh Lord, just hold each and every one tightly. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our lesson today comes from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 10. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age. 
according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven which should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. We have heard the Lord's scriptures being read to us. We have praised Him. We have prayed. Let us ask the Lord to just open our hearts and minds to understand everything today. Come, let us pray. Oh dear Lord Jesus, we have come once again this morning to meet with you, to seek that encounter, and yes, Lord, to learn from you. Lord, we read your scriptures, but most of the time we do not understand, we do not see your message within the passage. And therefore, Lord, we want to ask that you will grant us the wisdom to understand, to hear what it is that you want us to hear, and that you will teach us. Oh, dear Lord God, as I bring your message to these, your people, I pray, Lord, that you will just use me as an instrument of communication and that each and every word that flows from my lips will be your words, Lord, and that they will bring you honor and glory at all time. So, Lord, we pray, be with us now. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the past two weeks, I've spoken to you about spirituality. And what should motivate our spirituality? And those of you who will recall, I said our motive for spirituality should be our utmost love for Jesus Christ because of what he has done for each and every one of us by going to the cross. But you know, sometimes I find that when we try and be spiritual or we try and be pious, we sometimes try too hard and we, we sometimes, in our endeavor to be spiritual, we sacrifice the pure thing that God has given us and that is freedom. The freedom of choice, the freedom to choose Him above other people, above other things, a, a totally different lifestyle. But in our endeavor in doing that, in giving up our freedom, we chase after things and we, we adhere to traditions and rituals that actually deprive us of the free flowing of the Holy Spirit. Now in today's lesson, Paul writes a letter to the churches in Galatia. And he is he's fairly harsh in this letter of his. And he specifically refers here to people should adhere to the gospel as the gospel has been taught to them. Now, obviously, there was an influence from outside the churches in bringing a different type of gospel to the people of Galatia. And we see clearly how Paul slams this, and he even goes as far as saying those who bring this gospel, they need to be cursed by God and he says that they should not adhere to this other gospel so what is this other gospel well according to Paul these people came and they presented a gospel which included the observance of the Jewish law and circumcision for those who wanted to follow Christ now you know, it's quite amazing how people would twist the scriptures and they found that the Christian 
faith or religion, if you want to call it that way. I don't. I call it the Christian relationship. But they say it's far too easy. And people feel that they need to work hard to, to gain the favor of Almighty God. Now, there's a, a theologian of the name of Craig Kutzer who writes a book and he says, you know what? As these people were presenting this different gospel to the church in Galatia, it could have looked slightly different. And he reckons that it could have sounded something like this. Now remember, this is what Kutzer says, and he surmises this is what these people bringing this false gospel could have sounded like. It could have sounded like this, he says. You Galatians have taken an important first step by coming to faith in Christ. Now complete this step. Complete what you have begun and observe the Mosaic law. Become circumcised. Celebrate the Jewish festivals and observe the kosher food laws. Only by assuming this responsibility will you share fully in the inheritance promised to God's people. Think of Abraham who believed in God and became circumcised like Abraham. You too believe. Now do what Abraham did. Accept circumcision and your covenant obligation. What I just read now is a direct quote out of Craig Kutzer's book. And folks, don't you see what is happening here? Paul writes out and he slams this thing. Now, what do you see is wrong here? You see, very often we find Christianity to be too easy or too simple and we cannot understand that it is nothing that we do or nothing that we say that makes us Christians but rather that we are in a love relationship with Jesus Christ. Now we're always wanting to do something and it's exactly what happened here as Craig Kutzer puts it. We, it's too simple. We've got to do this and we've got to do that. And we've got to do that. And this brings on why people can't seem to understand how the gospel works. Now, the gospel we follow is a very, very simple gospel because it is not what we do that brings us into that relationship. All that God says or Jesus says is we must believe. We must believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. And because of that, we enter into this relationship and we are saved. It is when we believe in Jesus that he baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and resides within us. And that is it. What then follows is following the fruits of the Spirit and we allow the Holy Spirit to work through us so that we can fulfill what Jesus wants us to do. Now, you often say, John, but that we know that. So why are, are you talking about this today? Well, I want to say to you that I think there is still a big misnomer out there. Because whenever I speak to somebody... Somebody would say to me, you know, John, um, I'm a bad person. I can't come to church because I haven't done anything good for anybody else. And I keep saying to them, you know what? It's not about what you do, but it's whether you love Jesus for what Jesus has done for us. And I said to you last time round that our spirituality should be to love Jesus for what he has done. Now what has he done? Jesus came to the earth. He went to the cross. He took all our sins on him. And he conquered death. So that we could be set free. Now I just want you to, to stop and think for a little while. What do you think would happen. 
if our salvation was dependent on what we did. Just think of that. I think that's quite a scary thought. Because can you imagine getting to heaven one day and you get to the big pearly gates and Peter or Paul or whoever is at the gate says to you, you know what, you can't enter. And you're going to say, but that can't be. Because I did this and this and this and I believe I did better than this and this and this and so and so and therefore I deserve to be in, the, in heaven. You see, it, again, when it becomes salvation by works, we somehow have a grip on it. And it is all determined by myself, by me. It's coming back to the selfish me. And it's not about me. It's about what Jesus did for us. So, you see, wherever we are involved, and that is why God makes it that He does everything for us. He is the one that sent His Son. His Son is the one that went to the cross. His Son is the one that redeemed us. His Son is the one that paid the price. There's nothing that we can do other than just believe that He is Lord and Savior. And as soon as we come to terms with that, we will understand it is not about me. The other point that Kutzer highlights here is how Paul speaks out against circumcision. Now, I know that circumcision is done for medical re reasons, but in those days it was done as a mark of belonging to Judaism. Now, that was clear that all boys had to be circumcised and people could identify those men or those boys through their circumcision. Now that has changed. That has changed. You see, nowadays we don't have to show people with a physical mark on our bodies or by carrying a cross or something physical and tangible that people can touch and see. Um, that makes us part of the faith. Yes, it's great to wear a cross and it's great to, to have these symbols hanging from our bodies. But the problem is this, that you can wear a cross around your neck, you can wear cross earrings, you can have a cross in your house, but you may not necessarily be sincere. And haven't we seen how many people claim to be Christians, but are not Christians. They call themselves Christians, but when you look at their actions, it shows everything other than being a Christian. So then what is it? What is, what is it that people look to us to see in us? And I keep saying this every week, week in and week out, that people should see Jesus in us. Now, how do people see Jesus in us? Now, that is not as simple as what it is. You see, when, when the Holy Spirit comes to reside within us, and He stays in us, then we allow Him to work through us. In other words, we change our attitudes towards other people. In other words, we reach out and we love and we care for other people. We show them that we are there for them. We love them. In other words, when people see us, they want to be with us because they know that we care about them, that we love them, that we help them, and that they belong to us. And this is how a community of believers is started. Now, just after the death of Jesus Christ, we didn't have wonderful preachers and evangelists and huge big church buildings that went out for people to come to Christ. It wasn't done in that manner. But what had happened is the people of Christ actually cared about all those around them, whether they were of the faith or whether they were not of the faith, whether they were Jews, whether they were Romans, whether they were Greeks, makes no difference. But what happened is the people of Jesus Christ reached out to them cared for them, gave them food, 
sat down, spoke with them, so everybody became everybody's friend. And they took care of everybody. And this is the gospel that Paul is trying to keep with the people. This is what people should see in us. Not a mark or a cross that's hanging from your neck. It's wonderful to have the cross which shows that you are not scared to show that you are a Christian. But it's not the cross around your neck that makes you the Christian. It's your actions. It's your way of talking. It's your loving. And it's not something that you control, but it is something that is controlled by God that lets you take your, your Christianity out into the world. It's not about you. It's about Jesus living in you and through you. Folks, this morning I want to say to you that we should not be detracted by different Gospels that we hear day in and day out. We should not be led astray by messages like that, but rather that we just come back to the bare basics, allowing Jesus Christ to work through us, allowing Jesus Christ to lead us. You know, by wanting to do something and by wanting to cling to the Old Testament as part of our lives. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying we must not believe in the Old Testament. Of course we do. And we learn from the Old Testament. But it's, again I say, it's not what we do which, that brings us salvation. But in our practicing of rituals and traditions, sometimes we prohibit the Holy Spirit to flow through us and to do things. I, I'll never forget, I was in a church where... I was in charge of the youth then and Rita had done a, a wonderful play with the children and we were going to perform this Christmas play in the church but to do that we had to move the communion table. Wow! That, by doing that, started the Second World War because what had happened is people came forward and said you did not touch the communion table. It is sacred. You cannot move that. I want to say to you that the communion table is not sacred. It is just a place where we put the elements of Jesus Christ onto as we dispense them at a Holy Communion service. Nothing about the table is sacred. The practice of Holy Communion is sacred, but not the table, or as the Catholics would put it, not the altar. That is not sacred. No piece of furniture can ever stand in the way of the free flowing of the Holy Spirit. Folks, Paul lashes out to the church in Galatia and he warns them to come back to the gospel that they know. Come back to the gospel that you know this morning. The one that says, Jesus loves me and Jesus came to this world to die upon a cross so that we may be set free. The gospel we preach, what did I read to you the other day from 1 Corinthians? Is that we preach a Christ crucified, which could be a stumbling block to the Jews, and it could be foolishness to the philosophers. But to us, we know this is what Jesus Christ endured for us, each and every one of us, so that we can be set free. The only thing that you are called to do is believe in Jesus, acknowledge what he has done for you, ask for forgiveness, and then allow his Holy Spirit to reside within you and allow that Spirit to work through you. Nothing that we do must come from us. It all comes from Jesus Christ. Amen. Come, let us pray. Oh dear Lord God, we have heard your word to us today, Lord. And yes, Lord, we are so inclined to sacrifice our freedom for the word, for rituals, because we cannot believe what you have done for us. It is beyond our comprehension. But Lord, you call us into faith. You call us to trust you. And today, Lord, we want to pray that you will help us with that, Lord, that we will do just that and trust you, Lord. 
Lord, help us not to believe other gospels and other teachings and other things other than your word, your written word that was given to us by all those people that was Holy Spirit inspired. Help us to follow it, Lord, with your help, that we may be within your will and in your purpose, Lord. Lord, Holy Spirit, where we go astray, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will just hem us in and that you will convict us, that we may do what it is that you want us to do. Oh Lord, help us to love one another. Help us to care for one another, so that truly your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, may shine through us and that people may know that we are your followers. O oh Lord, we praise you and we thank you because you're a God of love and you're a God that cares for each and every one of us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that we can be your children. We thank you, Lord, that you care for us so much that you sent your only Son to die upon a cross so that we may be reconciled to you once again. So, Lord, we praise you and we worship you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Folks, once again our services come to an end. So therefore receive now the blessing. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with us here now today and forevermore. Amen. Folks, it's been an honor and a privilege to be with you once again, to just to share God's word with you. So as I leave you, I pray that God will bless you in this week that lies ahead and that you will just remember that He is there and you can reach out to Him anytime. So until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy, and always remember that Jesus is only a prayer way.